Good morning. Uh, today we are going to talk to Prof. Elmar Kotze, a professor in the Department of Soil, Crop and Climate Sciences. Welcome, Prof. Thank you very much. Good morning to you as well. Uh, Prof, can you share with us how did you become a researcher? Yes, I, um, I think it, it starts when you're very small, um, interested in how things work, uh, how, does, how does things operate, how does science work, and then eventually when I, in my high school years I also loved science, and then I ended up at the university, and um, my path was laid out for me to become a researcher. I was involved in soil science as just lecturing, but uh, you, you are involved with research as well. So I um, got involved with some projects that we went out to the field and I absolutely loved going out to the field and, and doing some hands-on research and see how you can make a difference to people's lives out there. So for me, research should be hands-on and there should be a solution to a problem. So that's why I love research. Thank you so much. And then, Prof, what are you currently working on? I'm currently working on soil health, soil uh, quality, soil carbon, so, and soil biology. So um, nowadays there's a huge movement towards using, um, looking at soil sustainably, doing, um, looking at the sustainable development goals, and making sure that there's no hunger. But to do that, you need to make sure soil is healthy, and um, that it produces healthy, healthy plants and healthy uh, food for people to eat. So I'm working on how does carbon, um, how can carbon be put into soil, back into soil, stop carbon emissions, and then um, carbon has a double-sided uh, thing. If it goes into the atmosphere, it causes uh, CO2 emissions, and this can cause global warming. But if you keep it in the soil, it adds to the soil quality and the soil health. So that, that's why we want to keep carbon in soil, not just for the emissions, but to get soil healthy, to so get better water quality, um, and the main thing is healthier plants and healthier soil. So that's what I'm working on currently, looking to see how we can incorporate the soil quality, soil biology, soil carbon. That's what I'm working on at the moment. Thank you so much. Coming to soil, and then we see that climate change is now affecting the soil. So how, what mitigations and strategies that are, you are using to maintain the the soil. Yes, so soil, as you mentioned, the soil is really important. Um, if you don't look after soil, it becomes dirt. So to keep it healthy, um, you have to keep uh, it, it uh, in a good condition, right? So carbon helps with that. So if you have carbon in organic material, so carbon can be forms of organic material, it um, can be residues, um, and if this stays in soil and doesn't decompose, then it, then, then it starts building aggregates in soil, and the aggregate keeps water, and it's a house for microorganisms to stay in, and they are your laborers. So if you want um, things to go well in soil and um, help with climate change, you look after the soil, make sure the carbon stays there, and that's different practices that can be applied. So if you're a farmer working with crops, um, then you, we go to regenerative agricultural practices or conservation agricultural practices where they use no tillage or stone mulch or um, those type of things. And if you're a cattle farmer, you have to look at, um, let's say, you know, move into the movement of high density grazing. Um, and this also enhances the organic material that's added to the soil, which keeps the carbon there. And this helps for climate uh, change mitigation. So um, if you can keep CO2 in the soil, capture it there, and the emissions are less into the atmosphere, this helps for climate change. There's a plus bonus for farmers as well, not just um, letting this CO2 into the air. If carbon stays in the soil, you've got an added advantage of water holding capacity increasing and fertility increasing as well. And then therefore a farmer can um, apply less fertilizer in the end. So if he uses his cattle and the manure from the cattle, and he uses the residue from his crops, that is de decomposed by organisms in soil, and they, they utilize the carbon, instead of going it up into the atmosphere, it, it, it becomes aggregate, stable aggregates or soil uh, clots, and it stays in the soil and it captures fertility into the soil. So uh, you, you stop climate uh, change, or you help to, 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 to mitigate that change. 
Thank you so much. We see that uh, the soil plays a major role in our lives. And then, Prof, are there any exciting gaps within your study area? Yes, there is. At the moment, um, agriculture is one of the sectors in our economy, in South African economy, that is actually growing. And so for any um, person that uh, that's wants to work in agriculture, this is exciting news because we know that it's growing. And, um, and so therefore, uh, it's not just uh, being a farmer, but being involved in production of food, sustainable food, and good and healthy food. So you need healthy food... Uh, to, to feed people, and um, we've got lots of research going on in how to mitigate that. On top of that, we also, if you think about climate change, an exciting venue that, that is happening now is we look at um, carbon credits, the so-called carbon credits. So the idea is that if you capture carbon into the soil, that you can make some money out of it. So uh, there's something called carbon tax in Europe and in America, where, where big companies uh, or factories, when they um, have emissions of CO2, they pay carbon tax. So that carbon tax is then kept into a pool, um, and so when you capture CO2 into the soil and you have carbon, you can claim some money from that. So that's, there's a huge movement towards um, helping farmers in claiming some carbon credits. But you have to understand what's happening in the soil. So therefore we train students and we go into our research to understand what's happening with carbon exactly in the soil, how do we capture it there, what type of management practices is uh, adv advantageous for capturing carbon and seeing if we can assist farmers in going that direction. Thank you, Prof. And then, looking at the artificial intelligence, what role can it play in the agricultural sector? Yo, that's a good question. Um, I still believe uh, you, you need a human element, but there is, uh, uh, artificial intelligence is um, in other words, if I have a, a problem with my soil, I can go onto uh, the internet and I can ask a question. Similar to if you have a medical problem, you can ask a question and, and they can answer it. But I do still believe in soil science specifically, you do need a, um, a human factor so that you can visually see the, the symptom. You can't just write it down, you need a hands-on approach. So we are moving in that direction, but, but it's still um, in its infancy, so I'm not sure if uh, soil science itself uh, will move in there. But they do use uh, drones, for example, where you take some uh, photographs from the top and uh, you put it into a computer system and uh, it generates a map, which is artificial intelligence, and it can give you an idea of what's going on in your soil. But you do need uh, a hands-on person in the field to actually look at the soil as well. So yeah, they, they, it's, it's moving in that direction, but I do believe you still need humans here. Thank you so much. And then, what message can you give to aspiring researchers? Um, I think to, um, to know something, you have to study it, right? So, um, and knowledge is power. So if you are investigating and looking into uh, whatever system, um, doing research, thorough research into something, you can understand it properly and you can make um, proper decisions on how to manage it. You can't make proper decisions if you don't understand the system. You can only do this with research. So therefore research in any any uh, system is extremely important, especially in soil science. We do research constantly to see how does water move in soil, how does carbon move in soil. And we do, do, do need to research. It's, it's on a microscope and this, this can't... Um, be, be necessarily be done in the field. You sometimes have to go to the laboratory and you have to do some proper research there and you have to do it over time as well. So it's important to continue the research and not just do a once-off study. Um, we've got plenty of studies that we um, are continuing with tank samples every three years, for example, and see how a certain management system is changing over time so that we can put it into models and do predictions with this. So research is very crucial and it's a, um, I think it's a very uh, valid direction to go into. It's very satisfying to do research as well because you, you find solutions for problems and that, that, that is ultimately what your goal should be, to solve problems and to help the human race around you. So yes, that's why research is exciting. Thank you so much. And then, Prof, apart from research, what are your other interests? I love traveling. I absolutely love traveling because you see the world and you see different cultures. 
you see the, how people are doing things in different countries, and it opens your mind a bit on on how things are working. So my my biggest hobby is traveling, traveling um, uh, to different countries, and also in South Africa. I love traveling to see different landscapes, to see how the soil looks, um, how does the color change of soils, and what's the reason for the change. So that that is for me what keeps me busy. I love that. Thank you, bro. And then one thing again, we dwell much on our jobs and then forgetting about our mental health. What message can you give to the working class about mental health? Yeah, mental health is very important. You have to have, uh, um, as I said, you have to have a healthy soil to have a healthy, healthy plants to have healthy people, but you also have to have a healthy mind. To have uh, uh, to understand how things work, to have perspective um, in life. So um, you need to to look after your mental health. And if you have any uh, problems or you feel stressed, you must go and find help immediately. Um, there's so much help out there for people that that has mental issues, and you might think you don't have anything bothering you, but you you need to um, look after yourself because if you look after yourself, you can look after your family. And it's important not to, to neglect your, your mental health. Very important. Thank you so much, Prof, for sharing with us. We really appreciate your wisdom on soil. And then we have learned that we must always take care of the soil so that we can get good products from it. That's great. It's a pleasure. Thank you, Prof. Thank you for inviting me.